what is up guys i just finished recording an entire video basically showcasing how i was able to develop a custom chrome extension of chrome extensions that i basically like and use i took them all together i bundled them into a single chrome extension and i don't even develop if you were to put a gun to my head tell me develop this or we're gonna kill you i will most likely be killed unless you ask me to print hello world on python then i have like a 60 percent chance of survival otherwise like i will most likely die however now with O1 Pro mode, I am literally replacing developers in my team that used to cost me $1,200 just for a single five functionality web app. I don't need them anymore for $200 with O1 Pro mode. I'm able to code literally whatever I, whatever my mind can conceive to be quite honest. And with uh, easy backend apps like Superbase as well, which all AI models are basically trained on, it's becoming very easy. Like the sky is the limit. This video isn't about marketing. It's mostly about the, the process that I use with O1 Pro Mode, O1 and Cursor to actually generate the app itself, which you can also do. You do not necessarily need the $200 per month chat GPT model. You can even do it with a $20 per month. However, you will run into limits and it will just slow you down, but it's possible. Without a further ado though, let's go. Test, 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 All right, all right, so let's get right into it. This is essentially the code alongside with the editor that I was using to make this all a possibility, again, as a non-developer, et cetera, with a basic understanding of IDEs, APIs, and the basics, again, of development. Here, you can see the different file types that we have right here. So .js, .json, .html, another .js, etc. And the MP3 files that essentially make the extension possible. I'm going to be showcasing the extension in less than a second. And above all here, you have the chat and the composer. And this is one of the key elements of Cursor that makes it such an excellent ID, better than Virtual Studio Code, primarily because it integrates AI directly into the ID itself. So making your workflow significantly easier. Now, before we get into that, one key thing that we should essentially cover is none other than the actual extension itself. What is the extension? Why did I build it? What does it do, etc. I generally, maybe because of my undiagnosed ADHD or my impulsiveness, etc., I have a tendency when I'm working to basically just open up social media websites and get sucked into the feed. So I've had two options. The first option is essentially blocking the actual social media websites on a router level which is a bit of a pain in the ass and I can't be bothered to do that. Also blocking them on a browser level as well, but blocking them, I typically work with them. So like blocking them isn't really practical. So instead what I came across is something that blocks the most dangerous aspect of social media websites. And that is none other than the actual newsfeed of every single social media website out there. So what this does is it automatically identifies the newsfeed itself and it blocks it indefinitely. So you can scroll down, down, etc., and it's just going to replace it with a certain quote. Now this quote should be centered up top. I haven't really got into that optimization part yet, but you essentially get the gist. And if I did want to actually unblock the news feed for a certain period of time, as can be seen on my screen right here, say for five minutes, I'd click on five minutes, unblock, I'd get my little dopamine hit, and essentially, yeah, then I just move on to the next thing. And the actual screen itself would lock up, so the feed would lock up after five minutes itself. Now, alternatively, I also like to use something called Pomo Focus, which is basically a Pomodoro timer, perfect if you have ADHD or undiagnosed ADHD or it's just hard for you to get into the zone to work. You set a timer for 24 minutes, you work, you take a break, you work, you take a break, etc. I really like this and I've been using this consistently for maybe two years to three years right now. I even paid the money for like the lifetime deal. I don't even remember what I paid for, etc. I think it was like for a Todoist integration. But I thought, as I was saying, with the tools that are available in the market right now, why not just integrate it directly into this Chrome extension that I'm building? And I did. So as you can see right here, it's essentially a copy, like same font, same style. Pomodoro timer. You enter the number of minutes that you essentially want to focus for. Start Pomodoro. Pause. Stop. You might be hearing a ticking sound right now, which is the background noise that I added for it because the ticking sound essentially just reminds you that time is passing by because if you do have some level of ADHD or medicated, unmedicated, you suck at time control and time awareness. So the ticking sound helps you remember that. And then also six Hertz binaural beats. If you want to go deep, like if you want to go deep, deep, like the deepest. So a bunch of different things, quite a few functionalities, all coded with the use of O1, O1 Pro, etc. And you could even use O1 to code it without any issue whatsoever. And then above all, a stats page as well. So number of hours focused, number of days accessed, and then day streak, direct copy of Pomo Focus itself. And that's essentially that. Another newsfeed here blocked. 
Twitter should block up in like the upcoming two to three minutes, basically. As you can see, it's already starting here, replaced with an actual quote itself. And yeah, basically, that's about that. So the website, sorry, the, the, the ID that I was showing previously, for those that aren't aware, is cursor.com, basically a fork of Virtual Studio Code and uh, with a direct chat integration with AI integration directly there where you can feed code and it's going to apply the code for you. That's essentially it. And then the initial idea itself came from something called Newsfeed Eradicator, as you can see right here, which I've been using for quite some time as well. So none of the ideas are original. I basically took Chrome extensions that I like and apps that I like. I blended it all together and that's essentially the functionality itself. Now, as per the workflow, the actual development workflow, you know, you might be on this video. You don't care about my ADHD. You want to get down and dirty. You want to learn how to code without actually being a developer. Developer. Very, very, very easy. Everything for me starts from actual O1 itself, so from ChatGPT. And yes, I'm on the $200 per month model because because we made this, mom. We made it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm on the $200 per month model because I got tired of the O1 rate limits every couple of messages. But you can still build insane stuff with DeepSeek R1 if it's actually available. Because when you make something available to the whole world, everybody tries to use it, and you need like giga servers to service the whole world at once so if you are able to use deep seek you can use it you can also build a lot however if you don't want wait times and you want the strongest model out there o1 pro is the leader on the market right now and it, no, it's not o3 mini high it's currently o1 pro it might have changed by the time you're watching this video but currently as of right now february 2025 early feb o1 pro is the strongest model everything starts from this prompt you're gonna help me code a Google Chrome extension that blocks out news feeds of the following social media websites, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. The default option is blocked news feed, essentially whenever you open a, a certain social media platform. However, the extension will also have a UI that will also allow you to unblock the website feeds for a set period of time. Can you build it? Note that I have never built Chrome extensions before, so I need you to always provide me with a full code. Certainly my master. <laughs> Below is a complete example of a Chrome extension, etc. It gives you the directory structure. You have the essentially the folder of newsfeed blocker, manifest.json, which is a file that essentially tells Google Chrome what the privilege privileges are for the Chrome extension itself. Background.js, popup.html for the UI itself, I suppose, and then popup.js, etc. And there you have the, the manifest.json. So at this point, all you need to do is basically copy paste the codes into the certain files that you would create on Virtual Studio Code and also load up that Chrome extension directly into Chrome extensions. So here we're on Brave, but in your case, it'd be Chrome, etc. extensions. You'd click on developer mode and you'd load an unpacked extension from the folder of your coding file. Very, very simple stuff. Won't get too deep into that right now because this video isn't actually about how to, how, to, how to code a Chrome extension. It's more about the coding workflow. So copy pasted, etc., And then we essentially ended up, you know, with lesser files than what you're seeing right now. But basically that's that. Then we ran into our first issue. The first issue was that Google, sorry, the extension was actually failing to identify the selector of the actual newsfeed itself. And the reason that this happens is because unless the actual bot or chat GPT, the AI has access to the website, it's not able to understand which XPath selector or which element is responsible for the newsfeed. So you need to go in there into the elements developer mode settings of Chrome of Brave, identify that XPath. So in this case, we essentially went copy, copy full XPath, identify it, and then provide it to actual chat GPT so that it's able to basically to, to stop it, to, to block it across Instagram, X, all the websites that you essentially want to block for. Also, bear in mind, all of this up to this point was with, actually with O1. I, I didn't even use O1 Pro Mode. So again, I repeat, you can do this with a $20 per month plan. It's very possible. You're just going to run into rate limiting and you're going to have to wait a day or a couple of days, etc. But it's slowly getting better. A couple of more troubleshooting, so it's still blocking the whole page on YouTube, etc. back and forth until we found the actual correct XPath that we need to block for the whole thing. Then it gave us the right code. Then I essentially tried to see if we can just copy an existing extension, but the code line of the existing extension is protected. You can't just copy it. It's Chrome has a certain protection in place for you to not be able to see it. So I wasn't able to override that. So I actually had to sit down and identify the right XPaths which in the end I did. So on Instagram, we had our first breakthrough right here with the, the, the specific XPath instead of the whole page. 
it gave us the code. We copy pasted it directly into cursor, into the relevant file type, and that's it. And then a bunch of different back and forths, basically adding the MP3 files, adding the different functionalities, etc. So one way of interacting with the whole thing and building it out is basically having O1 Pro mode or O1, etc. generate the code for you, and then you pasting the code directly into the actual file itself. However, you will run into limitations at some point with this with this strategy. So the great thing about O1 Pro mode is that you can literally copy all the data you have in all the files and paste it into O1 Pro mode and just tell it like, this is my current code. Let me know how to actually build future things. You might run into a certain token limitation at some point because it's not gonna be able to consistently spit out 2000 lines of code for you every single time for every adjustment. So in those cases, it's actually gonna give you the code adjustments that you need to make, which you can basically just plug into a cursor with Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is free, uh, select the actual code file that, co select the actual file that you wanted to edit. So for instance, if we wanted to edit content underscore script dot JS, and then we would say, add this here, please. And this would actually be the coded out difference that O1 wants us to integrate into our code. We'd copy paste it, for instance, copy, and then we tell a virtual studio code, <laughs> virtual studio code, and then we tell cursor, can you please add that? And it would, and a demonstration of this would basically be the following. If for instance, we wanted to, I don't know what something I wanted to add. Uh, let's say if we wanted to add a two hour option for unblocking the newsfeed, please add a two hour option for unblocking and blinking. It's going to generate it for us. We do not necessarily need to use O1 Pro in this case, but we will either way. Let's see how it goes. It's going to give us the code and I'll show you a direct example of me taking the code and using a cursor to basically apply it without having to edit the code, check your syntax, etc. because that can turn into a whole complication on its own. Now, whilst this is happening, keep in mind, this is an app without a certain backend. So it also removes a additional layer of complexity that you would have when you're developing because backend it set essentially means you'd have to integrate everything on the front end to the back end, so on and so forth. I might add a back end to this at some point if I do actually open it up for users. Right now, there's no point because Chrome has local storage, which I can essentially just use and there's no need for an external database or a big database to say the least or anything of that sort. However, if you were to actually code with a backend, I would recommend you use Superbase. And if you were to actually host as well, I recommend you use. So as I was saying, if you were to host, I recommend you use Versal. Both are free, both are very affordable as well. If you decide to actually get the premium options and both are very easy to use. Superbase has edge functions, which can be coded out for like additional functionalities of the app from a database perspective, which are very easy. Most of the AI models are actually trained on it, so you shouldn't have any difficulty whatsoever. And alternatively, it also takes SQL functions, so it's pretty easy to use. All AI models are trained on it, and it's a pretty good backend. I've used this in conjunction with Lovable. You can find the video on my channel where I built like a whole VA marketplace for that. Uh, again, no code, purely using AI, so it's very, very possible. Now let's check back on what we have right here. Please add a two hour option for unblocking the newsfeed. So O1 Pro mode, et cetera. And it tells us in popup.html, locate the select element for choosing, et cetera. It should look something like this. So we'll copy this, we'll head over to cursor, we'll select context popup.h, is it popup.html? Yes. We'll select popup.html. We'll say, please, because we're preparing for the AI apocalypse, uh, please add this code here. We'll let it run. And now you're gonna see a, fuck, you won't see anything. Yeah, that's not a problem. Basically, I typically like to have the file actually selected. So we told it and it gives us the actual code itself. And then you have this button here that says apply. I just wanna see if it did apply, did it? Let me just double check if it actually applied. Yeah, that's so stupid. I basically copied, Forget about that. I basically copied the wrong thing. What you need to add is this. So copy again, not actually this. You'd head back to cursor. You'd select popup.html. You'd say, please add this right here. Paste. Now it's going to give you the option and it should actually go somewhere here, which are the actual options on the UI for how much uh, time you want to essentially block for or unblock. Apply and you should see a green thing right here. You need to click on accept. If you click on reject, it won't add the code. So accept and now it's added. We control S, so we actually save this. Then we add whatever other functionality we need in the back end. When user picks the unblock, we'll send duration to the background script. 
So it's already done. Nothing else essentially needs to be added because it also sends it to the background script itself. Then in this case, you control S, head back to our Chrome extension. If you actually click on this right now, you'll see two hours. So we didn't even need to load, which is cool. And yeah, this will send a order for keeping the newsfeed unblocked for two hours. Now, typically you'd also wanna add like a block button just in case you wanna block it faster, which we can add later on, but that's about it basically. That's how you essentially add code. And that's literally the entire workflow that I use to basically add everything. Now, again, if you were coding something more complicated, front end and back end, I would typically give a command to O1 Pro saying, I'm not a coder, but I need to also update the back end and front end for everything that I do. So always uh, reply to me with front end and back end updates that are relevant to the order that I give. That's what I would do. And I would run it on Superbase and it should be honestly very, very simple. And you'd have to do like a git commit every now and then if you're hosting on GitHub, which normally you will with for something like Versal. But guys, my point is it's just becoming so much easier to essentially code. Anybody can literally code out anything, like whatever your mind can conceive, you can basically build it right now. Of course, you are limited by the number of functionalities that you wanna, that you're able to build, but slowly, bit by bit, this number of functionalities that you can build is just expanding and expanding and it's becoming significantly cheaper. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next one.